Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. Sleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. I guess there aren't many people who get more out of life than the great Gildersleeve. Today, for instance, he left the water department a little early and walked home in the brisk autumn air, working up a healthy appetite so he could enjoy a hearty dinner. And did he enjoy it? You bet. Oh, yes, indeed. That was a fine steak, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Yeah, nothing like a good porterhouse. No, sir. And the vegetables were perfect, too, Bertie. Yes, sir. And Bertie. Yes, sir. If there's any of that dessert left, hide it from Leroy. I'll be ready to take it on about midnight. You're a little late, huh? What's this, Leroy? I told Bertie to hide it from you, and I'd take it on about 9.30. <laughs> oh, well. Bertie, give it to Leroy. Yes, sir. He's a growing boy. I'll split it with you. I'm growing up, and you're growing sideways. <laughs> well, what the heck. I can still make the pretty girls turn their heads when I pass. Which way do they turn them? <laughs> no, my boy. <laughs> Any mail today, Bertie? Yes, sir. If you'll study on your desk. Oh, fine. Guess I'll light a cigar and go see who's been writing to me. See you later, Leroy. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Glad I started buying these better cigars. Hmm. Never would have gotten on to him if the city treasurer hadn't had a new baby. <laughs> mm. Why, George, what a lot of mail. Uh-oh. First of the month. And I thought they were friendly. Let's see. Gas bill. Telephone bill. Hogan Brothers. Dentist. Water bill. I'll pay that first and set a good example for my customers. <laughs> hey, what's this? Meat bill. Can't be that high. Is this the grocery bill or the national debt? <laughs> Costs more to live every month. Gildersleeve, you can't go on like this. You have to call a halt. Cut back. I did it! I got it, Bertie! <laughs> Wish they wouldn't yell when I've just gotten a headache. <laughs> well, here's my bill from the pharmacy. Let's see what Peavy's written on it. The month of September has come and gone... Please don't let your bill linger on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is not funny. Paper boys at the door, Unc. Oh? Dollar fifty. Oh, all right. Here. No tip for the kid? Oh, yes. Tip. Here's a dime. No tip for the kid who's giving the kid the tip? <laughs> Leroy. Okay. Well, before I try to pay these, I'd better see what they add up to. Miss Gilsey. Oh, yes, Bertie. The boy with the bill at the front door just reminded me. Of what, Bertie? Here are the back door bills. Laundry, milkman, and egg man. Back door bills. Front door, back door, I'm surrounded. Yes, sir. No wonder they're not coming down the chimney. <laughs> they do it Christmas. Hey. <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie, we're living beyond our means. And it has to stop. It has to stop right now. Today. First of the month. Yes. Now take that dinner we had tonight. Yes, sir. A big, expensive porterhouse steak with all the trimmings. Yes. Bertie, who gave you the idea we could live like this? You did. 
Me? Mr. Gilsey, you called from the office this morning and said, Bertie, let's have porterhouse steak and all the trimmings. Oh, yes. Well. That's where I got the idea. You called from the office and said, porterhouse steak and all the trimmings. Yeah, but Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know where I got the idea? Yes. That's Bertie. right. You ordered porterhouse steak and all the trimmings. <laughs> well, maybe I did. But I'm going to take all the rap. Leroy! Yeah? Step into the study, young man. What's up? Everything's up. Sky high. And we're going to do something about it. Look at this pile of bills. Gosh. What have you been doing all year? Saving them? Leroy, this represents what we've spent in one month. We? How do I get in there? Through Hogan Brothers' shoe department. Oh. Your new shoes. And fall suit. And school supplies. We have to start saving. Okay, I'll start right now. I'll quit school. <laughs> that isn't the idea. We just have to watch it. Living costs are an all-time high. We have to stop throwing money around. Who's throwing it around? We are. We're going to pull in our horns. We're going to spend less. And I'm going to set the example for the family. Good. Do you know what's happened to the dollar in the past 20 years? It's not worth half as much. Yeah? Now, what do you propose to do about the situation? Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. Yes, my boy. Ask you to double my allowance. Hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it makes a man feel good to take a firm stand on something. And Gildersleeve, you're going to stand like a rock against the wave of high prices, high taxes, and inflation. You may start a trend. Turn the tide. And all your friends will be proud of you. All right, George, I'll start cutting down now by buying some cheap cigars from Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? Peavy, you're going to be proud of me. You don't say. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm going to start right off by buying some cheap cigars from you. Mr. Gildersleeve, if you want me to be proud of you, spend some money. Peavy, spending money is exactly what I'm campaigning against. Is that so? Yep. I, for one, am going to live within my budget. You call that living? <laughs> well, we'll have to come around to it, Peavy. If we don't, there's going to be a rude awakening. Well, Mrs. Peavy and I have discussed that from time to time. The trouble with us, Peavy, we buy a lot of things we can't afford. We Americans live higher than anybody else in the world. Well, anybody who owes as much as we do has to keep up appearances. <laughs> yeah, all right, Peavy. Go along with the crowd. Follow the Pied Piper. Say, here comes the judge. Greetings, gentlemen. Oh, hello, Judge. Hello, Horace. Gildy, I'm glad you're here. Let's draw straws to see who buys the sodas. That's a good suggestion. Judge, I don't want a soda. Then let's draw straws to see who buys me one. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve isn't in a buying mood. Oh? No, sirree. I'm retrenching. And I advise you fellas to do the same. No, oh, you're right. Do you realize we're in debt up to our ears? Living on the installment plan? You know, take the judge here, for instance. Oh? You're living too high. Look at your chartreuse convertible outside. With all the extras on it. Now, Gilder, that convertible is a little indulgence that I allowed myself. Well, you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, and look at that hand-painted tie you're wearing. It's a needless extravagance. Besides, it looks horrible. Gilder, you gave me this tie for Christmas. A tie? <laughs> I did? It's not expensive either, because you gave me one, too. 98 cents. <laughs> well, I was saving money even then. You fellas are living in a fool's paradise. Yeah, they don't call me a fool. Yeah, me either. Well, I didn't mean it that way, fellows. I just feel sorry for you. You're throwing your money away, willy-nilly. You're just a couple of grasshoppers. And I'm an industrious ant. Wish he was an ant. I'd sweep him right out the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to stand here and be called a grasshopper. Judge, you just can't take a suggestion. Now, look at me. You know how I like good cigars, but I just ordered some cheaper ones. Hey, I'd better get those so you can be on your way. Hey, wait a minute, Peavy. I'll save more money. I'll give up cigars and cancel the order. Very well. Try to 
Come to think of it, my bill here was too high last month, Phoebe. Cancel my charge account. Yeah, well, super tight one. <laughs> I agree. Fellows, you may not appreciate my crusade now, but someday you'll respect me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, Bertie. By the way, in the future, don't call Peavy's Drugstore and charge anything. No, sir. You on the house with it? Oh, no. No, I just canceled my charge account. Yes. Peavy got a little miffed, and so did Judge Hooker. But I gave both of them a fine lesson in economy. Yes, sir. Now, how about dinner, Bertie? Are we having an economical dinner? Yes, sir. Fine. What's on the menu? Well, you know that round bone roast we've been saving? Bertie, we had steak last night. We can't have a roast tonight. Oh, we ain't having a roast. We're just having the bone. <laughs> oh, well. I suppose I can expect people to make light of a big movement such as I'm starting. And I don't care. So long as I keep a firm grip on the purse strings. Why, George, I'd make a good secretary of the Treasury. I have a good notion to wire both parties and let them know I'm available. <laughs> Hi, Unc. Well, hello, Leroy. How did you do today, my boy? What do you mean? With your money, of course. Do you save anything today? Do you practice what I'm preaching? Well, gosh, Unc, I did up until 4.30. Oh? And then I met a thirsty girl in front of a soda fountain. <laughs> you did? Yeah, bad. My boy, you should never let a girl maneuver you into a vulnerable position. What do you mean? I mean where you have to spend money on her. But, Uncle, sometimes a guy can't help it. Yes, he can. You don't find your cagey old uncle trapped into these situations. Ah! <laughs> what about all the money you spend taking Mrs. Winthrop out? I control that. As a matter of fact, I had a date to take her to the football game tomorrow evening. But instead, I'm letting her brother take her. Yeah? I'm putting myself on a budget with Paula, too, my boy. I may not take her out again until Halloween. This I gotta see. Well, I've given up cigars. I can give up Paula. I yeah, I'm right here, Bertie. Well, Paula. Hello, Throckmorton. You come in. But just a moment. Hello, Leroy. Hi. It's a delightful surprise, Paula, seeing you like this. Well, it's about tomorrow's game. Tomorrow's game? Mm-hmm. This is a little unconventional, I suppose, but my brother's been called out of town, and I wonder if you'd still care to take me. Me? Thank you? That's what she said. <laughs> well, of course, we shouldn't let those tickets go to waste. Oh, well, Rumson left in such a hurry, he forgot to leave the tickets. But I'm sure we can still get good seats at a slight premium. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can't get good seats, which I doubt, we can always read the results in the newspaper. Uh, you're joking, of course. I, yeah, joking. <laughs> yeah, I'll get the tickets, Paula. Delighted to take you. Oh, and after the game, there's a dance at the Crystal Room. In the past, Rumson has always taken me, but we don't have to do that. Well, if you're in the habit of going, unless you'd rather not. Oh, I'd love it. We don't have a table, but Pierre is very helpful if you tip generously. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'll get the table at the crystal room. Oh, you're sweet to take me, Throckmorton. Not at all. It's a pleasure. Well, I must go now. Oh, and Throckmorton. Yes? You needn't buy me a corsage. Just a chrysanthemum for the game will do. Oh, yes. A mum for the game. See you tomorrow. Bye. Goodbye, Paula. Hmm. Thanks for showing me how to keep from spending money on girls, Aunt. <laughs> now, Leroy. I'll get the tickets, Paula. Leroy. I'll get the table at the crystal room. <laughs> Young man. Goodbye, Paula. Goodbye, 25. <laughs> I don't see anything funny about that. The Great Gil 
Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Long-faced Louise is known all over town. One eye is blue, the other is brown. Her features are plain, but honest and true. Her hair's kind of shaggy. She's not well-to-do. But Lou's is well-loved as the fanciest girl. She's cherished and prized by a rich, handsome Earl. Now, girls, if you care, here's Lou's personal tip. Win your man with a salad made with Miracle Whip. That's poetry? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, seriously, folks, you have no idea how tempting salads can be, how good they can taste, till you've enjoyed salads made with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip has a wonderful flavor, a peppy flavor that's just sharp enough. It's delicious, and it's a different flavor, one no other salad dressing has. That's because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe to give you the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended carefully, thoroughly, with special craft beaters to give it just the smooth, creamy, thick texture you want. Try it. So many folks like Miracle Whip so much, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. And it actually outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. We're sure you'll like it, too. Get a jar tomorrow. For the best salad you ever tasted, get the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve was sailing blithely along on the good ship Economy until he heard the siren call of mermaid Paula Winthrop. Naturally, he hit a reef. <laughs> you should have seen Unc Bertie. He was putty in her hands. How about that? <laughs> Oh, Bertie, Leroy, when an attractive young lady practically asks for a date, what's a poor man going to do? You'd be a richer man if you said no. Yes, yes. Bertie, he said he might not see her till Halloween. He wasn't going to take her to the game. Oh, no. He was going to let her brother do it. You what a nephew. Bertie, you know what I got for an uncle? A jellyfish. Whoop. <laughs> now, I'll see here, young man. I just may not take her to the game. How are you going to get out of it? Well... When I called, the only seats left were in the end zone. It'd be an insult to put a pretty girl like Paula behind a goalpost. Hey, you sneaked out of it. I wonder how you're going to get out of taking her to the crystal room. Well, Bertie, if we don't go to the football game, it's a silly thing to go to the football dance. What a brain. Yeah, that's not brains. That's just me. I mean, <laughs> when I say I'm going to save money, I do it. Why should I follow the crowd? I set out to crusade, and I'm going to crusade. Yeah, but what does she say when you back out on your date? I'm not backing out. I just don't intend to spend a fortune, that's all. People have forgotten the days when they could have a big evening on a dollar. Yeah? What could a couple of grown people do on a dollar? Well, there are plenty of ways to have an inexpensive date. Sit in the parlor and hold hands? No, Leroy. Bertie remembers when a dollar went a long way, don't you, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, I ain't that old. <laughs> well, this evening, I'm going to prove it can be done. I'm going to take Paula out with only one dollar in my pocket. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. And I may not even need that. There's a band concert in the park tonight. Free. Oh, brother. Now, I'm going to suggest the concert to Paula. We'll go back to the simplicity of yesteryear, Bertie. Yes, sir. And if I know Paula, she'll be intrigued. If I know her, you'll be in Dutch. <laughs> well, I'm off, Bertie. Leroy. Yes, sir. Good luck. Yeah, you'll need it. <laughs> yeah, they're a little skeptical. But I'll show them. Yeah. My suit fits better with only a dollar in my wallet. No bulges. <laughs> Makes the coat drape nicely. Mm, silly to take a satchel full of money when you have a date. Of course, I won't tell Paula I only have a dollar. After I cancel the football game and the dinner dance, she might get the wrong impression and think I'm cheap. But I'm not cheap. I'm patriotic. And I may be doing the country a great service. Showing couples how they can have a date on a dollar. Say... Why don't I give this idea to the newspapers, along with my picture? 
Well, hello, Paula. Hello, Throckmorton. I'm ready. You sure, I see. Mm. <laughs> nice. Won't you come in? No, I think we'd better be on our way. Big evening, you know. Oh, I'm so excited. I can hardly wait to know what we're going to do. Well, Paula, today it occurred to me that in this modern world of ours, we're passing by the real fun of life. Oh? Think what good times they had back around the turn of the century. Oh, I've always loved the gay 90s. Must have been a fabulous era. Yeah, that's exactly what I was coming to. That's the way we're going to spend the evening. Oh, how exciting. I knew you'd fall right in with the idea. This is an evening we'll never forget. We'll relive the good old days. All right. Let's pretend I'm Lillian Russell and you're Diamond Jim Brady. <laughs> Diamond? Jim Brady? <laughs> oh, what a lavish entertainer. Evening-long banquets, private orchestras. Rock Morton, where are you taking me? Well, speaking of orchestras, I thought we might attend the band concert. The band concert? Yeah, just like they did in the horse and buggy days. Well, where did you hit your horse and buggy? <laughs> no, Paula, we're taking the car. <laughs> we'll just sit in the car and listen to the band music, Paula. Just you, me, and the stars. That's pretty basic. Well, it's quite a refreshing idea at that. You bet. Give a sleep, you may get out without spending a dime. Oop. What's wrong with the car, Crossmorton? Mm, I'm out of gas. Oh, well, there's a station right on the corner. You're lucky. Yeah, lucky. I better swing in. Yes. Just made it. Does your car have a cold, mister? <laughs> no, out of gas. Fill her up. Well, I have to watch my pennies. Uh, give me one gallon. You're kidding. Oh, <laughs> only one gallon, Throckmorton. Well, Paula, in the old days, people spent their money cautiously. Of course, that's out of style, and we don't do that anymore, but let's be corny just for tonight. One gallon. Okay. How corny do you want to be, Ethel or regular? <laughs> Regular, smart aleck. Mm, a gallon of gas shot a quarter. Oh, well, I've got 75 cents left. Uh, uh, Throckmorton, if you turn in here, you can park close to the bandstand. Oh, good idea. Uh, uh, yeah, how's this? Mm, this is wonderful. Oh, we must be early. Yeah, the orchestra's just coming on the bandstand. Well, look who's here. Oh, my goodness, Judge Hooker. Hello, Judge. Good evening, Mrs. Winthrop. Gildy, I see you can spot a good parking place, too. I'm just two cars over. Fine. It's worth the 50 cents they charge you. <laughs> 50 cents? The attendant will be around in a minute. Zeke, I'm down to a quarter. Oh, while the orchestra's tuning up, would you get me a bag of popcorn, Rock Morton? Popcorn? Mm, I'm hungry. They're selling it over there. You want two? Uh, how much is it? Twenty cents a bag. Just one, Judge. I'll go get it. No, I'm out of the car. I'll get it for you. Well, thank you, Judge. That's very nice of you. Not at all. Give me the money. <laughs> all right, here. Free band concert. I'm down to a nickel and I haven't heard a note. <laughs> Wonderful evening, Clark Borden. I enjoyed the band concert. Yeah, very satisfactory evening to me, Paula. Yeah, I guess we better head for home. I still have a nickel, but it isn't going to burn a hole in my pocket. Clark Morton, aren't you thirsty? I am, after all that popcorn. Thirsty? Hmm? Shall we turn around and go back to the water fountain in the park? <laughs> what? The city water commissioner would like to treat you to some fine water. <laughs> oh, Clark Morton. Mr. Peavy's still open. Let's go to his fountain. Uh oh, trapped. Yeah, that 
can I do for you two? Peavy, Mrs. Winthrop is thirsty. That's good news. It's been a little slow this evening. Mr. Peavy, may I have a glass of water? Say, wonderful idea. Give me one, too. Water, you say? That's right, Peavy. Two waters. And after that, I'm going to forget my diet and have a big pineapple nut sundae. Oof. <laughs> one pineapple nut sundae coming up. How about you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Me? Give me 35 cents. Uh, hold it, Peavy. Uh, Paula, speaking of your weight, yeah, I mean diet. What's wrong with my weight? Well, no, I don't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, neither do I, Paula, but if you're on a diet, you must think you're a little heavy. I mean... Well, I like that. Mr. Peavy, give me a double pineapple nut sundae. <laughs> Good. While you're making it, I think I'll look at the cosmetics. Are you going to let the lady eat alone, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, all right, what the heck. Give me a sundae, too, Peavy, and charge it. Mr. Gildersleeve, you closed your charge account this morning. <laughs> oh, that. Well, open it again. Yeah, well, I'll do it the first thing in the morning. I don't want it first thing in the morning. I want it tonight. Mr. Gildersleeve, a reopened account has to go through the credit bureau, and the credit bureau doesn't open till tomorrow morning, and business is business. <laughs> the confounded PD, all I have with me tonight is a nickel. Well, usually when a customer can't pay the bill, he washes the dishes. Wash the dishes. I happen to have a whole sink full right here behind the counter, and I hate to do the darn thing. <laughs> my George. Paula. Mm, yes? I must have left some of my money at home. Do you have any with you? Oh, I'm sorry, Throckmorton. I was so excited about our big evening, I forgot my purse. Peavy, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do this to an old friend. A fellow jolly boy. The city water commissioner. How hot do you want the water, Commissioner? <laughs> oh, I hate inflation. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. How much can salad dressing do for a salad? Well, if that salad dressing is Miracle Whip, it can do wonders. It can make the simplest salad in the world a special treat. Why? Because Miracle Whip has a truly remarkable flavor, a lively, teasing flavor that's made it the most popular salad dressing ever created. Find out just how good Miracle Whip can make your salad. Get the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing tomorrow. <laughs> and this is Gildersleeve again, folks. Before we say goodnight, I'd like to remind you of one thing. Be sure to vote in this very important election that's coming up. Believe me, these days it's a privilege to be able to vote for the man you want. There are not many places in the world you can do that anymore. And we want to keep on doing it here. The only way we can be sure of keeping the rights guaranteed us by our Constitution is to use those rights. And the most valuable one of all is the right to vote. Do it, please. Good night. Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Gene Bates, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with craft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild craft mustard. And craft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.